Hi, I'm Tim Gilbert. I'm your Business 320 instructor, and I wanted to talk to you about Chapter 7, Section 4, Estimating a Population Mean Sigma Unknown. A couple of new points in this and a couple of things you've already worked on. So let's take a look at a study of temperatures of 10 healthy adults. A sample was uh, mean was 98.2 and the sample standard deviation was 0.62. Let's find the margin of error and then the 95% confidence interval. Well, the error equals T alpha divided by 2 times standard deviation over the square root of n. T alpha is 2.262. We got that value by looking in the T table rather than the Z table. This is just a minor change, but just keep it in mind uh, the values do change and it's important to note that. So look at table A-3 and you look down the left hand side until you get to uh, degrees of freedom here. Column for degrees of freedom. And you look down and you take one less than the sample size. N minus one is degrees of freedom. So you're going to look at row uh, with 9 degrees of freedom and go across to area in two tails to the middle column, 0.05, area in two tails, and you'll see a value of 2.262. That's the value that replaces 1.96 from the Z table. This is the new estimate due to the lower sample size and the unknown standard deviation. So you've got 2.262 and you've got it times 0.62 over the square root of n, which gives you 0.44. So that's your error estimate. Now you simply take that error away from e, the average or mean, and you've got the mean minus this error of 0.44 gives you point or excuse me, 97.76 degrees, and the upper limit of 98.6 when you add the error to the mean. So based on the sample, the confidence interval, interval for the population mean is 97.76 and 98.60. Keep a couple of things in mind. Something's going to change on the next example and it's going to be a change in that multiplier for the t-value because we're going to up the sample size. Now we've got a sample size of 106. See the 106 up here? Our average stayed the same, our mean estimate or our average stayed the same, and our standard deviation stayed the same. So what's changed here? Well, we've got a much larger sample size. You look again in table A-3 and drop down to 100 degrees of freedom. And uh, in the larger sample size, you can use that estimate, use that uh, 100 degrees of freedom because it's close enough to the 106 and the increments would be very small. So you see a value under uh, 0.05 and two, uh, for two tails in the middle column. You'll see a reading that says uh, 1.984. So that's our new T alpha divided by 2 multiplier. See, the, the sample size in the T distribution does make a difference in the multiplier. So you have to keep that in mind and remember to take one less than the sample size uh, for the lower sample sizes. Larger ones, it's not so important, but it is in the lower ones of 30 or less. So you have 1.984 times the standard deviation over the square root of 106. That gives us a much smaller error window, our error estimate, 0.1195. So we subtract our error from the mean, 9808, and then 9832. And remember, 9808, 9832, the other error was 9776, 9860. 9808 versus 9832. So this is a much tighter error due to the larger sample size. The larger the sample size, the smaller the error estimate to give you a 95% same confidence interval, a 95% confidence of where the true error, uh, mean lies. 
So sample size does make a difference and when the mean is unknown as it will be in most of your work use the t distribution and remember to take uh, n minus 1 for your degrees of freedom and uh, get in the right column 0.05 divided by 2 and then you'll be fine you'll be able to pick up your uh, multiplier appropriately and get a good valid confidence interval interval estimate so uh, enjoy your statistics and I wanted to give you this heads up uh, before you started your homework take care